All right, how you doing today? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we are going to start a new series, a series all about chart patterns. All right, so we are going to use this book here as a guide. This is Thomas Bolkowski's Encyclopedia of Chart Patterns. It's a thick one, 950 pages worth of patterns, 20 pages roughly per pattern. So we got 50 patterns to go through. All right, so this is gonna be a long series, but I promise you, you won't regret watching these. We are going to do one video at a time, one pattern at a time. You will have time to back test these yourself and you know, get, get uh, more comfortable with trading them. All right. So today's video, we are going to talk about the head and shoulders pattern. This is probably one of the more popular patterns out of all of them. And uh, one that you hear a lot of people talk about. Um, it is one of the more reliable ones. And that's why I kind of wanted to start with this one first. But yeah, so before we get started, if you haven't already, uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell if you want notifications for my next videos coming out. And at the end of this, if you do gain some value, remember to hit that thumbs up button. Um, yeah, I'd really appreciate that help. Um, yeah, so let's get into this. So as you can see here, we have the dollar CAD on a one hour time frame. But before we get into that, we are going to discuss what a head and shoulders pattern even is. And uh, yeah, so basically it is a reversal pattern that either forms at the top of an uptrend or the bottom of a downtrend. All right, so you'll see price moving up a little bit and then all of a sudden it'll make a higher high here, come back down, roughly reach these lows here then make a another high there but it is not a new high it is a lower high all right and then we have our head and shoulders right here you will see this is going to be our neckline all right so this is going to be our left shoulder this is going to be our head and this is going to be our right shoulder all right, so usually the left shoulder and the right shoulder are roughly the same height. The more symmetrical this pattern is, the better, based on his data that he represents in this book. The ones that were messy, you know, they still worked, most of them, but the ones that were nice and clean were the better performing ones out of all of them. All right. He looked over, I think, 814 different patterns, um, all on stocks, mind you. So he didn't get data for the Forex market. However, these patterns appear in any market. They do work and they are reliable if you trade them correctly and you have the proper risk management in place, which we will discuss later in this video. All right. So now. Once this actually breaks, that confirms this pattern. If it doesn't break and it gets rejected, the pattern is not valid. So you're gonna wanna wait for a break to enter this. There's actually three different ways you can trade this pattern, all right? So you can trade it on a break. So you can enter right there. You can have your position right there. Set your stop roughly up there and then set your target down there somewhere. All right. So you can enter right on the break if you want, or you can wait for price to break, consolidate a bit. And as you can see, this is another pattern in itself. All right. So this is going to be your your flag pattern, and then you can wait for that to break. So now you have your head and shoulders pattern. You have a period of consolidation below your neckline. All right. And then it breaks lower. You enter on this break here. All right. That's another way you can enter it. 
or you can also wait for a retest of that neckline. This is the higher probability trade. If you can get in here, you have a very nice probability of this working out. Majority of the time you will see this retrace up to that neckline and a move down after that. All right. So you do want to wait for confirmation here. You want to wait for a rejection at this neckline before entering it. But yeah. All right. So in this book, he does go over a few little tips and tricks that give you a higher probability on these patterns working out that he noticed when he was back testing them. So basically the first one is going to be the volume. All right. So I know this isn't the actual volume for this pattern because I just drew this. However, this does represent it very nicely, coincidentally. So you want your highest volume on your left shoulder. All right. And then even though price went higher, you want volume to reduce. You want less volume up top here, which means buyers aren't that interested in it. Even though price is rising, there is not huge confirmation on that price rise. All right. And then on our right shoulder, you want the lowest amount of volume. All right. So you want decreasing volume throughout this entire pattern with your lowest on the right shoulder. And then once that break happens, you will see an increase in volume again, more selling pressure will come into the market and that volume will pick up. All right. So another thing he did notice in, uh, in his back testing was patterns with taller peaks were more probable. They had a better win rate than the ones that had, let's say, a short move like this. All right, just give me a minute here to work this out for you. All right. So patterns that had small moves like this, they, some of them did work, of course, but they had a higher probability of them failing than the ones that had the tall peaks. All right. Cause those represented strong rejections. These ones represent almost, if you really look at it, almost looks like just a period of consolidation, right? And then price rejects this neckline and bounces higher. All right. So that could happen. You always want to wait for this to break your neckline. This is going to be your neckline right here. All right. You don't want to wait for that. And, um, yeah, so those are little tips and tricks that he noticed. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's get right into this. Let's go back down here. All right. So this here is an example of a head and shoulders pattern on the actual price chart. Obviously it's not going to look as clean as the drawn one that we just looked at. However, you do still see the left shoulder here, the head here and our right shoulder there. And then we do have our neckline, which represents our support that hopefully ends up getting broken on this and we see a reversal in price. All right. So let's back out of this. You can see we've had a uptrend for a very long time here. And now as we discussed about the volume, you see our left shoulder, we got high volume, lower volume on our head and even lower volume on our right shoulder. So we have decreasing volume, giving us a higher probability of this trade working out. All right. So let's clear this chart here. All right. So let's play this pattern forward and we'll see what happens. And I will show you the three different ways that we can enter this if they do appear um, on this specific pattern. All right. So let's move forward one. All right. So we got our short entry 
we want to wait for this to actually close. We don't want this to send it back up, give us a pin bar, reject it and go back up and just take us right out. All right. So we want to confirm that that neckline is broken. We want to close below that and then we can enter. So now I'm going to show you how to use this ATR as your risk management tool, how I use it. I use a 21 period. So basically this gives me the average range of the last 21 candles. I don't know why the 21, it just seems to work better than the standard. Uh, I believe it's a 14 that it gives you. Uh, but yeah, I, I find the 21 works better. Personally, that's my preference. You can use whatever you want based on your back, back testing. All right. So now what do I do for my ATR for my stop loss and my take profit? Well, as you can see, we have six, 65 pips, eight pipettes. So what I'm going to do is take 658 times 1.5 to give me just slightly more than your average range. So it shouldn't hit our stop loss based on that, unless it's actually getting rejected and it's going up farther. All right. So if it's just, you know, just playing around a little bit, it shouldn't hit our stop loss based on that. So we have 987 for our stop loss. And now for a take profit, what I like to do is go that times two. So now we're going to have a two R on this. We're going to have our take profit at 1974. So we have 197 pips risking 98. All right. And then you're going to want to set your units or your lot size accordingly to the amount of risk you actually want to take. But first thing is to determine how many pips you are going to risk. All right. So now we have a two R our stop loss up here, take profit down there. Let's play this out. All right. Boom. Got a nice move there. Nice move there. And our take profit has been hit. All right. Beautiful. We just made 197 pips off this trade. That is wonderful. All right. So now let's see if this ends up getting a different type of signal. We discussed three of them. Didn't quite get our neck. There it is. All right. So it did hit our neckline. Do we get a rejection? So, and eh, not quite, I wouldn't enter on that one. That's not enough confirmation. That is enough confirmation right there for me to enter again. All right. So now this is a nice example of the retest of our neckline. We have support here, support here, resistance now here. All right. So, we are going to enter a position at the low at the close of this one. Again, you always, always want to wait for that close. All right. So now what is our ATR at now? We got 72 pips. So 72 times 1.5 gives us 108. All right. zero pipettes. That's why I got that zero there. All right. So now we're going to want to multiply that again by two, 216. And that's going to be our target off that one. Now let's see if this one worked. That one got stopped out and that's okay. Not every pattern is going to work need to know that that is why setting your stop loss accordingly is important. Not every pattern is going to work. All right. So now I want to show you actually an example of this in reverse. All right. So this is going to be a head and shoulders bottom. So this one, we do have a small downtrend here. It's not 
like we have been moving up currently, right? We have a swing here, move down, swing up, and swing down. But based on this, like if we want to use other tools to confirm this, right? We got, we're roughly in between the 618 and the 50% retrace in an uptrend. We do want to see this move higher. So we get a nice head and shoulders bottom here. So let's see how this plays out. All right, we get our break there. So now, because this wasn't a super strong downtrend, I'm gonna go easy on this one. I'm not gonna go all out. So I'm gonna actually go to a 15 minute time frame and see what this ATR is, all right? I want to be more conservative on this and don't want to risk as much. So we have 12 pips, 1.5, 12 times 1.5, give us 18. Oh, wow. 12 times 1.5 gives us 18. All right. So where was our neckline on this? Why is it not showing up? Let's go back to our one hour. Billy, 15 minute. All right, there's our neckline. So if I want to enter this, I could have actually entered it right here. I know I pushed it forward a full hour, so that's why we got a few extra candles there. But based on this, what I want to do, I want to take our 12 pips, multiply it by 1.5, have a stop loss of 18 pips and a target of two of that. So we got 36 pips. All right, let's just show you that here. 18 times two, 36 pips, all right. So now let's see how this one plays out. Before we do actually, I do want to show you this. As you can see, the reason I'm gonna be more conservative as well, we have structure up in there, all right? When we did fall, right? We tested, 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 and then fell. Made it lower, lower high here, lower low here, lower high. Yes, we did break this trend, However, we have this structure up here, so we're gonna to wanna to be more conservative. All right, so let's play this one out and see what happens. Took a little while, but we got our take profit hit right here. All right, and then let's see what happens further. And it does reject and come back down. All right, so depending on where it is on the chart, and the for formation of it, um, you're gonna wanna be aware of all that. And you're gonna want to trade accordingly. On that dollar CAD one, we did have a nice uptrend as we did just discussed, right? So we did have a very nice uptrend. And once it broke that, we had a nice strong move, uh, strong rejection um, off those highs and a nice move down. This one, however, it's more of a structured move, kind of consolidation right here. Um, we are slowly moving down. I can almost guarantee you this one does play up eventually, but for the fact of our trading, we want to you know, take what we can get. We don't wanna be guessing on long price movements because we really don't know what it's gonna do. Um, we want a pattern here you know, we, we spotted this, we took what we can get from the market and we moved on to the next one. All right. So yeah, price did keep going up, but that that's irrelevant, right? We took our profit, we got out and yeah, we made some money. All right. So, um, yeah, that's basically the head and shoulders pattern, uh, in a nutshell. And if you do want to learn more about this, I mean, you can get this book here. Um, like I said, it's Thomas Bulkowski's 
Encyclopedia of Chart Patterns. He goes over everything in this. So he tested roughly 640 patterns in a bull market um, and then 174 in a bear market for a total of 814 patterns. So he tested 500 different stocks between 1991 and 1996 and 200 stocks between 1996 and 2004. All right. So basically what he determined was that the average decline, so these are on a daily chart as well. We traded these off an hourly and a 15 minute chart, but on a daily chart, when you see these patterns, what he noticed, they had an average decline of 29%, which is pretty huge. However, when it did move back up, it had a, a new high and it went up 51% from those lows. So as in that dollar CAD one, that may have, I don't really know, I didn't play it out, but it may have continued up even higher than where that head and shoulders pattern played out. So it's not always a full reversal. And that is a mistake a lot of traders actually make. All right, they're expecting a huge reversal way past our old lows. Like, let's go back to this quickly. All right, like some traders may be looking for something, you know, way down here. They're, they're trying to get, like, what is this even? All right, like they're trying to get like 800 pips off this. Oh, where's our last structure level? Well, we have, here's just an uptrend. So we had a nice pattern here. I'm expecting a move way down here. I'm only on an hourly chart. It's not going to happen. Well, I'm not going to say it's not going to happen. It could happen. But the odds based on this data here that he represents in his book, the likelihood of that happening is it's pretty low. All right. The higher probability is this actually going down here, moving all the way back up another 51% from these lows here. That happened more often than a full reversal all the way down. All right. So don't get confused. You know, trade accordingly. Set your targets at reasonable levels. Take what you can get and get out. Reduce your risk. And uh, yeah, trade green. You know, learn these patterns. And um, yeah, when you spot them, they, they can be high, high probability trades if traded correctly with the proper risk management in place. All right, so that's, uh, that's all we're gonna discuss for this one. Um, next pattern I do want to discuss is going to be the double bottom and double tops. All right, this is another very popular pattern that you will see at um, highs and lows in the market. Um, it is another reversal pattern. So that's the one we're gonna discuss next time. Um, but yeah, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Remember, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell as well for notifications on the next videos that we will discuss these chart patterns in and other content that I will be posting. Um, so yeah, anyway, hope you liked it. Hope you learned something. Back test this yourself, you know, get familiar with it, uh, get comfortable trading it. And uh, yeah, hopefully it helps you uh, make some money in your trading. All right. So anyway, uh, that's it for today. Have yourself a nice day, trade green, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.